everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for the very first uh, IMAC webinar focusing on the application of augmented reality. Thank you once again for joining us. So uh, during the course of this uh, presentation, we will be highlighting the applications of augmented reality in the first half, uh, followed by uh, the portion where, we'll be, where we will be opening the floor for any questions or concerns that you may have. Uh, before we start uh, off this presentation, I would urge you to uh, please mute your mics because uh, we need, really need to uh, avoid any disturbances. And please pin um, Indica's uh, screen, which, is, um, which would allow you to actually pay more attention and follow the presentation with ease. So over to you, Indica. Hope you can hear me very well. Um, so uh, let's uh, jump into uh, through the first uh, webinar series. The first one is the uh, the application of augmented reality, which we are going to talk about. So my name is uh, Indik Vijay Surya. Maybe some of you know me. Uh, I'm the Chief uh, Innovation Officer of Arimac, and I'm focusing more on uh, uh, the, uh, the augmented reality, virtual reality field uh, in, uh, in the company. So let's just uh, jump into what we are talking about today. Um, so uh, what we are covering today is basically, uh, first we try to get an understanding of uh, what augmented reality actually is. And then we move on to a very brief history of how uh, the augmented reality, the, the term came into the field and some of the applications that has been done in the recent, in the, the history. And then we are, we are now with this uh, augmented reality. And uh, the, the important factor of this whole presentation, the application of AR. So we have a lot of uh, examples, uh, a lot of videos that we want to show you throughout the presentation. And then last but not least, we'll be talking about the, uh, uh, not much more technical, but it is good for someone who's like, who want to step into the field of AR. Uh, so we'll be like giving a brief introduction of how you, what are the tools and what are the requirements that you want, if you want to step into the field of AR. Right, so, uh, understanding what augmented reality is. Um, so basically when it comes to these realities, um, you have uh, like virtual reality, um, augmented reality. Some people have, some people call MR, which is called mixed reality. And there's, uh, there's XR. So all of these realities are there. So augmented reality and virtual reality. So those two have this, uh, you know, a big difference uh, when it comes to the, uh, the immersive technology. So I'll give you a brief uh, demonstration. So here we have like uh, created a small demonstration of what is the difference between virtual reality and augmented reality. So virtual reality. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to put you a, a headset. So let's uh, let's go ahead. Um, so this is uh, what we call a virtual reality headset, and you put on it, and now you can see uh, a demonstration of Mihin Thale. Right. So what virtual reality is now, initially you were with me, you were in, uh, uh, in my physical world with me, but now you are in a separate, separate environment. So this one, we call it the virtual reality. So you have experience, you have immersed yourself in another virtual world, replacing your current physical world. So here you have your own interactions, your own superpowers, you can like move around, move around wherever you want in a separate digital world. So let's take this uh, headset out of your head now. Right. So what would be the term uh, augmented reality? So now you can see uh, that we have this, uh, the whole physical world, right? I'm here, I have a table here. So in augmented reality, what we do is we augment digital content in a physical world, right? So I'm going to spawn something out of this, uh, out of this table. As you can see, you already know uh, who this is. Uh, so this is DSN, 
right? So I have this whole augmented reality content that is on top of the table. So, and when it comes to uh, augmented reality, uh, what, what is actually happening is like, it is a combination of the digital components that you see here with the physical world. And it aligns with all the physical components. And most importantly, the, the, the interactions with the world is real time. So if I like try to uh, tap it and then I can like, you know, have some sort of an interaction with the AR world, right? So like that, uh, and, and also I need to talk uh, about that this field is multidisciplinary. That means it is not just programming, but it is a combination of art and tech into one field. So let's take this back and let's go back to the presentation. So as I told, um, it is uh, an interaction in the physical world, a digital interaction. It aligns with the real environment. It is real time and it is multidisciplinary. So let's jump back to the, uh, the history of uh, augmented reality and how it all started. So in 1968, uh, this, uh, the, the professor from the University of Harvard uh, 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 called Ivan Sutherland, he actually wanted to uh, uh, show, you know, he actually wanted to put something uh, in this physical world, but it has to be a digital content, right? So he, he created this, uh, this system called the Sword of uh, Damocles, uh, which is, uh, so what you can see here is a, a, a one that is hanging, a device that is hanging from the ceiling. And through that, he has implemented uh, a screen where you can see the augmented content on a screen. So you can see that there is a 3D content that is like spawned uh, in, the, in the screen itself. So compared to the technology that we had back in the day, back in the day, so this is uh, a revolution. And, you know, coming more and we can like, uh, in 1974, uh, uh, Myron Kruger, who was actually a professor in the University of Connecticut, uh, he wanted to create this uh, artificial reality where he, want to, he wanted to implement uh, the interactions without any hardware, like the goggles or gloves or whatever. So he created this, uh, this augmented projection where the, uh, the hand movements and all these physical movements uh, has like mapped with a digital uh, map with digital objects that are on the screen. So they have used, so they have actually created a separate lab for this. And, and this is one of the first implementations of, um, of augmented interactions uh, in the field. So with that, you know, a lot of implementations have been developed, uh, has had been developed for this, uh, the field of AR. And, uh, and, and another implementation is, uh, is done by the, the US Air Force Research Laboratory, where they have like created this robotic arm where they can move and interact in an augmented world. So, you, so they, in, in the real life, they can actually see uh, uh, a screen but, but through that device, they are able to see uh, the augmented content. And, and again, in around 1998, the whole augmented reality features came into the live TV broadcast. So as you've already uh, experienced, so in, um, in this image also, you can see that there is this yellow line. So with the, you know, in 1990, so you can see a, a small yellow line by the, uh, by the, uh, the right side of the screen. So that yellow line is not there actually. So it is, it is like augmented through uh, while the live TV broadcast is going. So this is when, uh, so this system, we call it as the first and 10 graphics system, which is done by Sports Vision. So this is one of the very first implementations, very first applications of augmented reality that was put together in live TV broadcast. So that was revolutionary. So if you search uh, for the, the first and 10 graphics system, uh, it was, you know, way ahead of its time. And even now you, you see a lot of systems that has pioneered with this whole implementation. Uh, and you are, you are seeing a lot of AR content in the live TV screen. Right. So in 2000, uh, a professor called uh, Hiroka Sukato, he created this augmented reality library and he made them open source. So what it actually is, you can see it in this, uh, in, the, in the image. Uh, so this is, uh, so it is himself. So he has created this uh, uh, 
the, the collection of mathematical libraries and he has put it out as an open source library for everybody to use. And it was named as AR Toolkit. So even now the, the website is still live. So if you go to uh, artoolkitx.com, uh, you can download the open source library and then work on, uh, on top of it. So in that, you can see as in this video, uh, what he has done is he has used these predefined uh, samples, uh, these predefined images uh, to, um, to track, right? To, to track something in a, in a virtual world. Right? And as in here, you can see that A and B are two separate markers. And if you go back to the slide, uh, you can see uh, that there is a marker called hero. So I put, uh, I put a small dog on top of it. So such like that, people were capable of uh, creating their own augmented reality applications using these template markers, right? So like this, you can like, you know, the, the developers were able to put on small uh, 3D objects on top of these markers. Right, so that's the history. And now in the recent history, we have like um, uh, uh, an exponential growth of uh, the, the field of AR. In 2009, um, there was a, a very first implementation of paper to life so, uh, through the Esquire magazine. You know, the Esquire magazine uh, is one of the, uh, the, the popular magazines uh, in, um, in the United States. So this was one of the first, very first implementations of AR that has done uh, in the in a magazine itself. So for that, they have used the template-based markers that I have discussed uh, before. So going ahead of the time, uh, Google and you know big companies came into the field, and Google also implemented this this new hardware called Google Glass. Maybe you know about this. It was a revolutionized product back then, and. Uh, so this is this is much more like the very first implementation of uh, a hardware which is intended to be used uh, in the uh, in, used with augmented reality. But but when you know with the privacy concerns and with the uh, with since it has a camera in front, there were a lot of privacy concerns that uh, raised by the consumers. And then Google Glass, the the whole project was discontinued for the mass market. But it was available. It is now available. It is now being used in industrial applications. So another implementation that is done by Microsoft is the introduction of the Hololens. So when it comes to the augmented reality hardware, Microsoft Hololens is considered to be as the the the, the very first device which has a lot of augmented reality processing. It is a high processing device which is capable of developing and implementing a lot of AR applications. You have like gesture tracking, you have uh, uh, um, the object detection, uh, world detection, and all, all of these things can be done uh, in Microsoft HoloLens. And uh, coming into the, uh, in the few, uh, to like 2017, there were a lot of augmented reality mobile SDKs. So one reason, that augmented reality, the, the, the term augmented reality is uh, bound with uh, mobile devices is that with the, with the time, uh, the, the processing power of the mobile devices uh, exponentially grow, uh, grown, right? So some of, some of the mobile phones that you have may have more RAM and more CPU power than the, the computer that you have like just five years ago. Right, so like that, you have a lot of powerful devices at your hand, and doing all this, you know, mathematical computation in mobile is much more easier now. Right, and along with the with the time, there was uh, a, a new player in the field for augmented reality, which is called Magic Clip. Uh, if you have heard of it, they actually uh, in in 2016 they actually came up with this uh, concept video of how this Magic Clip device would uh, would be. Uh, and what it would provide. So, for example, they have created, they have like published a video of a whole uh, basketball field where there are like children sitting next to each other, and you can see a very uh, you know big wear coming from the from the flow of the basketball field. But none of these children were wearing any of the head-mounted glasses. So people actually expected that magic clip would be um, similar to holograms uh, that people were like thinking about earlier. 
But unfortunately, it used to be another head mounted display. And in 2018, they actually released that product. So it was also like, you know, as you can see in this video, it has similar interactions as uh, Microsoft HoloLens. It has similar user interfaces, but everything is like viewed inside this, uh, this physical hardware device where we have to put on. So it actually, uh, the, the, expected, the expectation was to like have multiple people sitting around so every, every one of them can see, experience the augmented reality uh, content uh, all together, but it, but it required a separate device. So that, that was actually down. But still, we are in this uh, uh, in this uh, field with some of some sort of hardware component, right? So we have like came across a very large history of uh, all this mathematical computation, all this research, and all this hardware. And where we are now uh, with the implementation of uh, AI? Yeah. So <laughs> um, so all this technology has come down to this. Uh, the Facebook filters, you, you already uh, uh, experience a lot of AR implementations these days, right? Right, so all this motivation for all this uh, uh, augmented reality has come mostly from the movies. So if you are a, a fan of Star Wars, uh, and if you have seen like there are like a lot of movies uh, for Star Wars, and if you have seen the very first Star Wars movie which came in 1970s, and the, and the graphics and the, you know, compared with the time that it came out, the graphics and what they have like uh, predicted about the future, about these galaxies is really, really good. And it was revolutionized. So these, these concepts actually paved the way uh, for, the, for the developers that we have now to develop these kind of things. Right, so let's talk about uh, the mobile layer. So I'm, I'm picking up the mobile AR because like almost 90% of the, the, the augmented reality use cases are bound with mobile phones and mobile, uh, you know, tablets and mobile phones, uh, Apple and Android, right? So when it comes to AR, we have two main fields. Uh, one we call uh, marker-based AR. So marker-based AR is something that you have, like, you know, the, the, the hero marker that I've explained before. So it is something that you have uh, some sort of a poster or a 3D object that you already have. And we make the, uh, the, the mathematical algorithms try to understand what is in this, right? And then if another device scans it and it identifies and try to spawn something on top of it, right? So if you, if you download some AR application and it asks you to scan a poster, that is marker-based AR. The other one is markerless AR. In markerless AR, you don't have any sort of markers, no posters. There are no like, you know, any 3D models that you want to scan. You just have to like open up your camera and it will automatically scan the flow. It will automatically scan the table. And then you are capable of putting all these 3D objects on top of it. So that we call as markerless AR because it doesn't have a marker. So let's just jump back to this marker-based AR. I'm going a little bit technical in, uh, in this slide. Uh, so when it comes to marker-based AR, we have two main categories. So one thing is pre-trained. So as I've explained in the, uh, in the previous slide, the, the hero marker and some of the markers that, are, uh, that came together has this black and white patterns. So all these mathematical algorithms are trained to understand these patterns and once they understand the pattern, then the developers are capable of putting all this AR content on top of it. So, but you know, you know, you know, using these pre-trained, you know, just these ugly templates and ugly uh, uh, icons everywhere just to show something uh, is not ideal. So, people came up with this new uh, algorithms to track uh, everyday objects like posters and everyday plain objects like. Uh, uh, TV screens, right? So for that, we call um, it as tracking the natural features of a poster. So for that, we call NFT, which is also known as natural feature tracking. So most, you know, recently we are, we are highly using this technology 
for many of the augmented reality applications. Uh, you know, scan a poster and win something, scan a poster, play this AR game and win uh, a prize. So those are a lot of use cases. So when it comes to markerless augmented reality, so this is the current trend that we have right now. And what it does is it, it identifies the real world. So I'll, I'll show a small demonstration of a, of a project that we have done. Um, so uh, this one we have uh, done uh, using the, the Spark AR uh, technology provided by Facebook. So we have used the, 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 the body tracking and body detection uh, algorithms so that we can spawn this 3D object behind behind the, the human, right? And, and also we are capable of, uh, you know, attaching the wings to the back of the human. So such like that, in order to do that, in order to do that, we require a lot of algorithms, uh, which includes 3D object detection and as well as human parts detection. Another example that I'm showing right now is, uh, is a very uh, cool game, right? Uh, which is kind of similar to bowling. It is a multiplayer game, right? And, and you can see that sometimes this, uh, the ball goes in front of the human and sometimes it goes behind the human. So when it goes behind the human, there are a lot of mathematical algorithms that try to understand this human and then uh, show that human. Now you can see a small glitch here. You can see that, you know, it tries to understand where this ball at, right? And at the same time, what they have done is they have mapped the whole area of a mall uh, or maybe an exhibition hall so that uh, the, the whole game, the, the whole system would identify what is around. So it's, it's real world detection. So it's a combination of uh, human body detection. And sometimes it try to, uh, the, the ball try to go behind the human. So for that we call occlusion, right? So, uh, so if you are playing, if you are, you know, playing an AR game, and you can see that this AR uh, object goes behind a tree or goes behind uh, a table. So we have to mathematically do that, right? So for that we call occlusion. And another, um, let's say, one of the most recent technologies that came out with uh, augmented reality is the introduction of persistent augmented reality. So now we talked about the marker-based AR and markerless AR where you don't have anything but you spawn 3D content on top of it. And then we talk about persistent AR where people have a world scale AR uh, platform where, where they can save all this AR content somewhere else so that someone else who's coming to scan the same place, they can actually receive uh, uh, what's there. So you can see as in this video, uh, they are using uh, a tablet device and scanning and every, you know, what, what is scanned will upload it to the cloud and it will again retrieve it from another device, from another person and they can see that same thing uh, at the same place. So Microsoft uh, and uh, Microsoft is one of the, one of the main uh, uh, players uh, who came up with the, with the, with the service called Asia Spatial Anchors. So currently it is on beta and they are like implementing new uh, features into it. So what, what happens here is <clears throat> when you scan the world, it actually tries to capture the whole world around you. Now you can see as in this image, it, it captures the whole points, right? And it creates this 3D environment, which is, which is saved in the cloud. So when somebody else scans the same 3D environment, it tries to match everything uh, in the in the cloud and once the place is matched it will tell that the cloud will tell the new person okay this is the place and it has been identified before so all the content that is you know all the 3d content that is added there will be there so there are a lot of use cases that we can make use of this persistent augment reality so if you follow our blog uh, the the official Arimac blog uh, we have written a separate article about how persistent augmented reality works uh, in much more detail. So you can go to our, our blog, uh, you can go to our website and our blog and see uh, uh, what's in there. So uh, let's jump in to the, the key point of this, uh, the whole presentation, uh, which are the applications of AR. So 
our first term, uh, our first application uh, of AR is regarding marketing. So when it comes to marketing, one of the key uh, applications that are available right now in the market is try before you buy. So as you can see, uh, this is an application developed by IKEA, uh, which allows customers to try all this furniture before they're buying so that, you know, if, so that they can see how, whether the, the, the furniture item would fit in their room, right? And they have like, they have marketed this product uh, to be used so that they would not uh, be disappointed just by, you know, like this, uh, by ordering the, the, the wrong furniture, right? And also like doing all these measurements by themselves, you not know, by the main furniture. And another one that uh, shows up, try before you buy, uh, so this is uh, one of the applications that we have uh, developed uh, with uh, with Visa. So this is uh, 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 an e-commerce platform where you can. Uh, so there are a lot of 3D, uh, a lot of items where you can like uh, open up in a, in a 3D space. So you can just view them. And there is another implementation uh, which is called Try On. And uh, so for this, they have actually used. Um, uh, more algorithms just to, uh, you know, artificial intelligence algorithms just to identify the hand, the, the movement of the hand, the fingers, so that they can like uh, spawn this uh, 3D objects in the, in the body part itself. Uh, right, another feature, another uh, marketing feature that uh, we have added here is uh, the, the Vinka platform that we have created. So, uh, so this is, uh, we are happy to say that this is one of the, uh, this is the first ever Sri Lankan uh, AR based campaign, which is uh, provided for, which is, which we uh, published for recruitment. Uh, we have done it through Vinka platform. So all you had to do is you had to download this Vinka app and then you have to scan the paper. So when you scan the relevant, uh, relevant uh, uh, space in the paper, then you'll be able to like apply for this job. So it, it is one of the, uh, the interesting features that we have added uh, uh, in terms of marketing. Uh, another uh, field, so when it comes to manufacturing, maintenance and logistics, all these uh, three uh, work together. So one of the main implementations that we can do with augmented reality is we can combine uh, internet of things, we can combine electronic uh, sensors with augmented reality to show real-time information so if if you are a worker if you are in the manufacturing field and if you want to see the information of the machines uh the, the heat levels the, the the sensor levels in real time so using augmented reality is one of the best things that you can do and here also there are like uh, you know uh, ar implementations that uh, that has been done so why we use ar in the manufacturing field is mainly uh one thing is to increase the productivity. So you don't have to have uh, someone else uh, telling you what to do. Uh, you can have everything like uh, uh, viewed in a 3D environment, so you can just follow that. So when it comes to complex assembly of uh, certain uh, machines, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the key, uh, 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 key opportunities uh, that we can make use of uh, using augmented reality. So another another field uh, in uh, the, the AR applications are done in uh, in maintenance. So for example, if you are doing the maintenance in a in a factory, and if you are to do uh, um, uh, some sort of maintenance before any uh, issue occurs, uh, the you know preventing something before that happens is one of the best things that you can do in maintenance, right? So with the use of augmented reality. And, and all the other sensor information, uh, you are capable uh, of creating these AR experiences where the preventive maintenance can be done much more quickly and easily. So this actually increases the productivity and also uh, it gives uh, the, uh, the guidance of uh, even, even, for a, uh, even for a new empl employee to the industry who has access to this uh, AR technology will be able to provide the maintenance without any expert support. So that is one of the key features that we can implement in the maintenance field. And also, which is similar to the manufacturing and maintenance, another feature, uh, another application that we can use 
is in the in the field of logistics, right? So when it comes to logistics, a worker has to check the information, find the necessary products or goods, you know, and then scan it and report the data. Also, they have to deliver to the loading dock, and then also sign off the docu sign off the uh, all documents. So that's the whole lot of process which uh, the, the worker has to do when it comes to logistics, right? So these kind of things can be done easily by the implementation of augmented reality uh, glasses. For example, as you can see, uh, they actually scan the, the, the product and it will um, show you what to take. It will uh, ask you what are the, uh, the, the, uh, the trays, uh, what are the, uh, the trolleys that they need to pick. And they actually, you know, the, uh, the, the application itself will guide you across uh, of where you have to go. It will show a, lo a small path uh, to navigate. And everything will be done. So this thing is currently uh, implemented in DHL as well, uh, which is called vision packing. So they are using the Google Glass, and uh, there is another glass called Boosix, uh, where they make use of all these uh, variables and the augmented reality applications to increase their productivity. Right. Another uh, application, another field of application of AR is transportation. So here I have just, uh, I'm just showing a small example, uh, which is currently in uh, devices, uh, which is currently in um, uh, vehicles like Tesla and some of the, some of the advanced uh, vehicles uh, where you can uh, navigate, where it automatically navigates you uh, through AR. So it will be, it is much more easier than just using uh, traditional navigational methods. Okay, so another application of uh, augmented reality is uh, in the training field. So uh, just imagine uh, you have a man you have a uh, uh, service plant where you have to uh, do all the servicing of these uh, uh, mechanical uh, machines, and there is there will be a new employee coming to your uh, company. To work on these machines so rather than providing you a separate person uh, all the time just to be uh, by your side to guide you through the process we can make use of the AR applications like this so that the new employee can learn on the job itself just without asking anybody's help right so this is one of the key features that is currently uh, implemented in a lot of factories uh, so this is a product, uh, what I'm showing you is a product called Worklink, which is offered by uh, the company called Scope AR. So their main product is to use uh, the, uh, the, the training field uh, in, in, the, uh, in the mechanical process. Another example is, uh, is using the, the medical equipment. So for the newbies, uh, so the, the new people who are coming to uh, work on medical equipment, uh, they they are giving uh, augmented reality based training so that they know how to you know combine each and every machine and how to get a lot of training experience in an immersive manner. Right. Another field uh, is uh, where we are using augmented reality is education. So this is actually a, a small application created by uh, a single person uh, where they have actually have to scan a page and uh, it automatically pops up this whole chemistry experience in front of it. So that is actually a very uh, uh, interactive experience where anybody can take while learning. Even not, not just for the, uh, uh, for the high level students, but also, but also uh, for the small children. There are a lot of augmented reality based story books where small children can actually enjoy what they are reading. And at the same time, they can interact with the whole story in, a, in, a, in an immersive manner. And these, you know, these books, they have actually implemented small augmented reality based games so that they can learn uh, through uh, an immersive uh, experience and they can learn while playing as well. So what I'm showing right now here is one of the researchers that has done in uh, Disney Research Lab where they have tried to uh, put on this, uh, you know, uh, this ba basic drawings of children into augmented reality objects. So, so what 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 has happened? Uh, what is happening in the uh, the education and AR is that uh, using AR you can create the education experience much more better uh, by 
introducing a lot of interactive experiences. Right, so one of the other key features, one of the other key implementations uh, that has done through augmented reality is in the construction field. Um, so even right now, uh, if, if you are in the construction field, you know before like doing any sort of uh, building uh, uh, design, you actually design the whole, uh, uh, the model of it, the plumbing, the electricity and everything. So by integrating augmented reality into the, into the construction workers, the engineers, they are capable of viewing all of these uh, uh, building information models uh, and they're capable of visualizing everything in real time in the on-site itself. So for example, if you are, if you are an architect who's designing uh, uh, a building with all these components, the plumbing, electricity, and also all this, uh, the foundation and everything, if you can show that, if you can show your design to the client in the site, on the site itself, uh, I think uh, that's a, that's a whole new level of, of an experience. So uh, so if you if you look for the company called Trimble, uh, so this is one of the, uh, the the key companies who are pioneered in the augmented reality field plus construction. They provide this uh, this software and hardware where they can actually spawn the the real building model on the site itself. So this is revolution as technology. So right now, even the small developers uh, like us <laughs> uh, can make use of these building information models. Uh, there are a lot of uh, plugins that are available. So for example, uh, Unity, the, the 3D engine, uh, they provide a separate plugin called Unity Reflect. So it, it makes use of the BIM models, uh, which we call the building information models. We can import these models directly into the AR world so that we can show each and every component in a very immersive manner. Um, another uh, field where we are using augmented reality is uh, the military, right? Um, so for example, the, uh, so what I'm showing right now here is uh, the, the US Army who is uh, using their custom augmented reality hardware so that they can make use of all these uh, uh, tactical uh, information right in front of their eyes. So uh, what I'm going to show now is a concept video that is being released by US Army. What they think of how they can actually make use of the augmented reality field uh, in, the, in the military field. So for example, if you are, if you are a hardcore gamer, you know how this could uh, be beneficial. Uh, for example, uh, the army, they can actually differentiate who are the allies and who are the enemies. So like this, uh, using AR, you're capable of realizing who, uh, who the actual target is, which will, which, will, which will be affected in less casualties of civilians, right? And another implementation, which is currently uh, up and running, is uh, in the, uh, the, the field of aircrafts, right? So they have this uh, high-tech uh, heads up displays attached in the aircraft, which actually has um, a high performance rate of identifying the plane and even the, uh, uh, for example, even the, uh, the runaway itself. So it has the capability of understanding uh, uh, a large area uh, of, uh, uh, of the whole world. So another uh, uh, another implementation uh, of uh, augmented reality in the uh, in the field is travel and tourism. So, uh, uh, for example, uh, so, um, there are a lot of applications that are available in the market, available in uh, the, uh, the the app market, where you can uh, actually have this application as a uh, a guided tour, right? So if you are if you are new to a certain area in the in the world, so you can make use of these uh, uh, applications. To uh, so what you are seeing here right now is uh, is an application which provides you a guided tour, uh, which which gives you much more, which gives uh, uh, a tourist uh, you know some immersive experience 
so they they don't need to you know hire a specific uh, guide to do that and they can actually go to a restaurant so if you go to a restaurant there can be another ar application for example if you don't want to like you know when you go to a fancy restaurant you can see a lot of like you know a lot of dishes that you don't know what it is but if you can see them in real time or uh, how it could look like then you can actually have a feel of what you actually buying so this is another implementation of uh, ar that is in the field of travel tourism and you know uh, hotels and everything right another field is um, where we are using medical uh, we are using augmented reality is the medical field right so some of the examples are uh, you know getting all the patient information and the, the real time information of the of the patient rather than just looking at traditional screens time to time uh, by implementing this augmented reality app, you know augmented reality interfaces uh, the the physicians the operators they can actually view the status of the patient on top of the patient uh, itself so that is one of the revolutionized technologies that uh, uh, people are now capable of by implementing augmented reality another uh, field uh, another example in the medical field is that the medical students have the capability of um, studying the anatomy and studying what's uh, you know what's in the medical field through augmented reality technologies so as you can see uh, you know through ar technologies you are capable of uh, learning uh, every component just by looking uh, you know rather than just like getting a physical item on top of your hand you can virtually you can do that you can have a you know uh, a you know a vertical cut uh, in, in anatomy and then identify uh, what it would look like right so last but not least so one of the main applications of currently in with augmented reality is through game so what i'm showing you right now is once you know some of the games that we have developed uh, in arimac uh, you know uh, with uh, with augmented reality technologies um, to to be frank this uh, the, the term augmented reality uh, came into play with the introduction of the game called pokemon go right so uh, pokemon go was created by a company called niantic which was like uh, which is like now identified as one of the largest augmented reality based companies in the world so they are like trying to create this um, um, this whole world world scale augmented reality platform that you know they can use uh, the the combination of persistent augmented reality and all these augmented reality features into one single platform so people can have all these ar um, technologies flying around right so as you can see now we have a lot of a um, lot of fields so i have like just taken a very few of it so if you think of the opportunities uh, when it comes to ar and uh, the related fields the opportunities are endless so what i'm showing you is some of the statistics that are done uh, by statista when it, when it comes to ar by 2025 it is like uh, Uh, it is forecasted that the revenue of ar is more than 100 billion dollars right including uh, the other immersive tech uh, implementations so most of this uh, uh, rate mo most of this revenue comes from uh, custom augmented reality applications and um, and if if you are an ar startup you will get a lot of opportunities if you are if you are an ar enthusiast you will get a lot of opportunities you have a lot of fields where you can implement this augmented reality solutions right so now let's see how we can step into ar so if you are a developer and if you have uh, if you have an interest in jumping into the augmented reality field so as i've explained before the whole thing is multidisciplinary right so it is not just one one uh, field of interest so you so ar is a combination of mathematicians programmers 3d designers and also ui and us enthusiasts and as well as sound and visual effects so all these combined uh, will be able to provide a very immersive experience through augmented reality so 
if you are you know if you are a, uh, if you are a person who who want to develop everything from scratch right so if you want to develop something you know if you want to develop augmented reality from the scratch uh, what you can do is uh, for marker based ar there are a lot of algorithms there are a lot of research papers that are published so if you go to scholar.google.com and if you just type in augmented reality you will be treated with uh, a large number of research papers in different different fields of augmented reality so when it comes to marker based ar so as you can see um some of uh, some of you know for, for basically for marker based ar you are using the algorithms called as interest point and uh, matching also we call it as feature point and matching so what what it does is it tries to identify the features of uh, of a provided image and then tries to match it with a pre trained target right so the algorithms that uh, that are currently available uh, uh, in the uh, for for this marker based ar are uh, uh, harris uh, harris corner there are algorithms called sift uh, surf fast brief orb so all of these algorithms so if you download if you are able to download open cv so there is a popular uh, computer vision library called open cv uh, you can use in in open cv all of these uh, uh, algorithms are already implemented so you can make use of these algorithms and try to implement your own ar uh, uh, your own ar experience right so when it comes to markerless ar so there are a lot of mathematical fields that we have to uh, identify the main thing is visual odometry so as you can see in this video so visual odometry is basically like through an image uh, the algorithms try to understand the depth of each and every object right so by doing so it tries to create a 3d reconstruction of the whole area right so so you know the, the visual odometry itself will provide plane detection and again uh, it will like uh, uh, give the object detection and another uh, another technology that is added for the markerless ar is uh, semantic segmentation so as you can see here so basically semantic segmentation this is you know widely used in autonomous vehicles uh, this is highly used Uh, to uh, differentiate different different objects so as you can see you can see the people in red and vehicles in blue so this is called semantic segmentation so all of this included uh, we have to implement a lot of machine learning and deep learning algorithms uh, such as object detection in order to come up with a algorithm of our own but you know uh we are you know most of us are not mathematicians right we we want we are in the creative field we want to create something uh you know with something that is already implemented yes we have the capability of doing so uh, that right now there are a lot of uh, software development kits available in the market uh for example goforia so when it, when it comes to marker based ar goforia is one of the key uh, companies that has provided um a software development kit uh, a plugin uh, to be used by anybody so that they can make use of uh, the augmented reality uh, uh, core features and implement their own ar application so goforia is a company which is like previously owned by qualcomm and then they like you know they were acquired by a company called ptc but they are investing uh, investing heavily on the augmented reality field so that they have this sdk available everywhere and another similar uh, sdk uh, is called ecar which is done by a chinese company which is which is much more similar and uh, uh, available uh, to be used so if you uh, if you go and uh, look for goforia and ecar documentation you can easily get them on the internet and with that uh, you know the, the two rivals of mobile uh, operating systems apple and android they came up with their own ar uh, frameworks so apple came up with a framework called uh, ar kit and android came up with a with a similar uh, platform called ar core so making use of this both uh, 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 both sdks 
the developers are capable of uh, implementing their own AR application, right? So when it comes to the Apple, the AR kit, there is a separate tool called Scene Kit where Apple provides the, the a, a much more easier interface so that the developers can work with 3D objects much more easily. Uh, for Google also, they have there is a, a, an SDK called Scene Form SDK, uh, but unfortunately they have uh, like depreciated, uh, you know, depreciated it uh, for some reason. They have put it down, but I'm sure they'll come up with something uh, new so that the developers will be able to implement the AR applications much more easily. So when it comes to mobile uh, 3D uh, implementations, mobile application development, when it comes to augmented reality. Uh, Unity 3D game engine is one of the main uh, tools that we can't left out, right? So Unity has uh, native support for augmented reality applications. It has support from Buforia directly and also ECAR, and they have a specific library called AR Foundation. So if you use, if you are using AR Foundation, you don't need to like specify this development into both iOS and Android. You can just use AR Foundation to create your own 3D, uh, own AR application. And then the Unity engine itself will work on deploying it to Apple and iOS. So just like Unity, Unreal Engine is also providing the mobile support, but they are not directly supporting the augmented reality uh, based implementation, but it is possible to be doing so. Uh, when it comes to Unreal Engine, the, 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 the 3D graphics, the graphical implementations of Unreal is much more better than Unity for now. Uh, but when it comes to the support for augmented reality, uh, I recommend using Unity Game Engine. And if you are not a programmer or if you are not a mathematician, but if you have the capability of designing 3D content, you have a uh, much more interesting user experience. Uh, one, you know, another tool that you can develop AR-based content very easily is uh, Adobe Aero. So it, it is a it is a small platform uh, developed by Adobe. Uh, it's called Adobe Aero. So you can go ahead and register yourself. And if you are a designer, then you can create you you can try to create your own augmented reality application. Um, with that, uh, there are like you know when it comes to AR, most of us use augmented reality every day. I think through uh, Snapchat or through Instagram, Facebook, you have a lot of like, you know, all these filters, right? So some of these filters, like, you know, some of the, most of these filters are not just developed by the company themselves, right? All of these are user generated content. So for that, both all of these companies, you know, both of these companies have created their own tools. For Snapchat, there is a tool called Lens Studio. So they have like, they're providing uh, very good support on that on how to implement uh, AR content, uh, you know, the, the user interface is much more uh, easier, right? There's no coding, there's coding, but you know, uh, even, even for somebody with no uh, coding knowledge uh, has the capability of creating their own AR content. So if you go ahead and search for Spark AR, you'll be able to download a specific uh, tool. Uh, through that, you are capable of creating your own AR content and you can share it across your friends so that they can open it through Facebook, or if you are using uh, Snapchat, you can through that. Uh, you can do that through Lens Studio. So for contents, right? So when you are doing augmented reality designs, uh, augmented reality applications, uh, one of the main things that you have to consider is the content, right? So for you have to go ahead with the design of 3D models. You for that you can use Blender. There are tools called uh, 3ds Max, Maya for that, and also for 2D or you know the, the user interfaces, the user experience. You'll have like 2D buttons floating around. So for that, you can make use of Illustrator and Photoshop, and uh, you know GIMP and Inkscape. So those are like some of the tools that you can do designs. Right. So whatever that you have designed, right? Whatever the things that you are trying to do through augmented reality. Uh, so there are a lot of considerations that you have to understand, right? So you have to understand how the 3D world works, right? For example, if you are if you are creating a poster uh, for that that pops up some AR content on top of it, 
then you have to have some sort of you have to have the feel how the 3d world works with the poster and you know with relative to that poster how you place all these 3d objects in the field right and when you when you place all these 3d objects in order for that to be much more like uh, realistic then you have to go through uh, proper lighting right so those are you know you have to think of how the uh, how the shaders has to work you have to consider the materials that you are going to use right uh, when it comes to the 3d content uh, so proper texturing and proper animation and also as i have explained before you have to think of proper sounds and as well as visual effects right so all these things to together will create a very good augmented reality experience right and also it has to provide a very good interactive uh, feel proper interactivity so that the person who's like the person who's experiencing the whole ar application will be immersed in that so anybody will be able to create the augmented reality app right anybody will be able to create something but in order for that to make it feel right you have to follow this consideration so there is an app in uh, the google uh, play store which is called ar core elements uh, so if you download that application uh, it will actually guide you if you are creating an ar experience it will guide you how you have to uh, implement all the interactions so i'll show a small video of it uh, so this actually shows uh, when you get into ar how you have to place content and there are like uh, they have a specific menu to differentiate so if you if you are like you know uh, spawning markers the environment the movement and the user interface the, the manipulation of objects uh, there is this thing called reticle and uh, so everything uh, is uh, very beautifully explained by google themselves so if you are creating an ar application i recommend you download the, uh, the the ar core elements app so you can like uh, you can experience that on top of your own table and then uh, realize if you are developing an ar application what are the considerations that you have to do right so we are coming uh, to the end of this and uh, let's uh, take a small recap of it so so far we uh, tried to uh, I have like gave a small definition of what actually augmented reality is and the brief history of it uh, and its roadmap and most importantly in the use cases there were a lot and there were a lot that I can discuss as well and then also an introduction of how you get hands on with augmented reality. So uh, yeah so that's uh, pretty much it. So I thank you very much uh, for joining with me. So this is the first webinar series that we have done through Arimac. I suppose uh, that you have uh, learned something. So this is the time for question and answers. Nishuri. Hi, everyone. Um, the floor is open to any questions that you have right now. So you can send it across on the chat and we are very happy to answer. Are we having any questions? Any questions uh, from anyone? Any problem areas or concerns? Okay, yes, uh, we will be sharing the recorded video across all our social media channels. So just follow us on like Facebook and Instagram, and I'm sure you can get the version. But beyond uh, getting the recorded video, are there any concerns or any clarifications that you would like? Uh, how is the pricing of AR applications, Indika? Yeah, so when it comes to AR uh, application pricing, um, it depends on what you're actually building. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, so when you when you go in the AR industry, it, uh, some of the AR applications can uh, go uh, from just 100,000 uh, uh, rupees to millions, depending on the how the scale of the project itself is. But since you know how, uh, how AR works and what sort of an effort that you have to put 
in order to develop such a, such an application, you can price it accordingly. So basically, it it it, it goes down to this multidisciplinary uh, implementations, the three D modeling, visual effects, and all the requirements the clients want. Um, we have another question from Gihan Ayesh Mantha. He would like to know if we have to pay for any sort of software if we are going to develop an advanced AR project. Um, no. So all the tools that I have uh, shown, uh, not you know, the, not the Adobe uh, tools like you know Photoshop, Maya, and all uh, all uh, software. But if you want to like develop uh, the AR content, all this SDK, everything is provided free of charge uh, by Google and by Apple as well. All right. Um, also, Anirash would like to know if we would be in the course of this uh, these webinars, if we would be making any apps on AR. So that's something that they would like to know. Yeah, sure. Uh, in a, so now uh, the the. So this presentation was mainly to uh, give you uh, an introduction of what are the applications that we can do in AR. So now you know what are the opportunities that we have, what, what we can do through AR. And uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a future uh, series, we'll be happy to guide you through uh, how you develop an AR content much more easily. Uh, one more question. They would like to know if uh, how you can develop a sample application or any kind of a demo without uh, developing the whole application. Like, is there any possibility to develop a prototype? Uh, you mean right now or right uh, in a separate uh, discussion? Uh, I believe in a separate discussion. Yeah, obviously it's possible right now with the time constraint and with the... Uh, with the preparation, uh, we are not capable of doing that. But yeah, definitely in a in a previous in a in a future discussion, we'll be able to do that. Uh, one more person would like to know, uh, in general, like how can we improve the knowledge in AR applications? I believe, like any portals or any websites that they can refer to, or any documentation that's freely available. They would like to. Yeah. Uh, so so if you are working on uh, the. Uh, the whole AR experience to be provided through uh, the Unity game engine. Unity itself provides uh, a separate set of documentation, which is called AR Foundation. So they have a separate video series on uh, how to implement augmented reality uh, on, on a markerless basis. And also in, uh, in, in Vuforia, as I've explained before. So they, are, they have a separate set of tutorials of how you implement uh, this uh, uh, the mark based AR. So if you go to YouTube and just type in the keywords, just, just type in the things that I've explained in this video, you can see a lot of separate tutorials which are much more relevant to this, uh, this field. Thank you, Indika. Uh, one last question from Akhil. Uh, he would like to know uh, how, uh, as basically, how do you think we can apply AR in learning and education sector, primarily if you can provide any examples from the local sector, any locally provided uh, developed products that are in use? Yeah, so for that, we have actually created our own uh, product called Vinka. So uh, so if you can go ahead and download uh, from the Play Store, there's an application called Vinka that we have developed. So it may, so make use of that application. So there are like specific uh, uh, markers that we have uh, put together in separate, separate campaigns that we have done in order to increase some of the educational uh, items. And also there is another uh, another product in the market, uh, I'm not sure the name of it, but it, it gives you a basic introduction of this, you know, the, the, the solar system and um, all, the, all the basic science experiments in, uh, in, in an AR field. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, we'll try to send it across uh, for the people who have registered all the links uh, that we have. The video as well and any any ancillary material that they would like in terms of uh, getting more information on AI, right? Yeah, cool. Right. I think that's pretty much it, right? Thank you everyone for joining us and hope to see you in the next few sessions that we have planned over the course of this month. Uh, thank you, Indika, for the very comprehensive understanding on AR and the application of it. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you, everyone. Hope you have a really good night. Thank you. Bye-bye.